The gymnasium's echoes had a way of amplifying the silence, a vast emptiness that seemed to swallow every drip of sweat and whispered curse. As the head basketball coach of the struggling Ashton High Tigers, I'd grown too accustomed to that silence, the kind that followed another heartbreaking loss. My team, a ragtag assembly of determined yet underskilled teenagers, had become the perennial underdogs, our dreams of victory often dashed before the final buzzer. The weight of their disappointment was a heavy mantle, one I wore with a growing sense of despair. One gloomy evening, as I sat in my dimly lit office poring over game footage, seeking the alchemy that might transmute effort into victory, my computer pinged with the arrival of an email. The subject line was a simple question. Desire to win? Skeptical yet intrigued, I opened it. The message was cryptic, offering a solution to my woes, but demanding a decision without revealing the price. It promised victory, not through strategy or training, but through influence over the unseen forces of the game. My rational mind screamed scam, but the desperate part of me wondered, what if? The decision to reply to the email was one I made in a moment of weakness. I expressed my skepticism but asked for details. The response was immediate, as if they were waiting just for my doubt to show its face. No cause for trying. Instructions will follow. Decide after your next win. It was absurd, yet the promise of victory was intoxicating. I agreed without knowing what I was truly consenting to. The next game was unlike any I had ever coached. We were playing the league leaders, a team so superior in skill and strategy that our defeat seemed preordained. Yet as the game progressed, every play I called unfolded with uncanny precision. My team, animated by an unfamiliar confidence, played as if guided by an invisible hand. We won, not just narrowly, but with a decisive lead that left everyone, myself included, in disbelief. The euphoria of that win was unlike anything I had ever experienced. My team's joy, the roaring approval of the crowd, the incredulous praise, it was addictive. That night as I lay in bed, the email's promise haunted my thoughts. The victory was ours, but at what cost? I pushed the question away, drowning in the sweet nectar of success. Weeks passed and our winning streak continued, each victory more improbable than the last. The team, once doubtful of their abilities, now played with a zeal and coordination that seemed divinely inspired. But with each win, a nagging unease grew within me. Players whom I had coached for years seemed different, their eyes occasionally flickering with shadows of something unspoken, as if they too were aware that the nature of our success was unnatural. Then, as the season drew to a close, the email returned. A season of victories, it read. The price is due. Confusion and fear nodded in my stomach as I pondered the cryptic message. The cost of our triumphs had been a mystery, one I had foolishly chosen to ignore. As I looked upon the faces of my team, young lives filled with dreams and potential, a chilling realization dawned on me. Our pact with unseen forces had a darker side, one I had never anticipated. The air was thick with anticipation as we entered the final game of the season, our spirits buoyed by an undefeated record that no one, not even I, could have predicted. The boys played with a fervor that seemed fueled by more than just training and determination. As the final whistle blew, sealing our victory and our perfect season, the celebration that erupted was tinged with an undercurrent of something I couldn't quite place. Was it fear or perhaps foreboding? That night, the email's ominous message about a price due haunted me. I lay awake, pondering the nature of our success. It had felt exhilarating, magical even, but now it seemed hollow, tainted. The realization that our achievements were not entirely our own weighed heavily on my heart. I had led my team into unknown territory, and the dread of waiting for the other shoe to drop was agonizing. The following week brought a devastating blow. Jeremy, our star point guard, was found lifeless in his room. The shock sent ripples through the team, the school, and the community. Jeremy had been the epitome of health and vitality, his sudden passing inexplicable. As I stood at his funeral, watching his teammates, his friends, grappling with grief, the email's promise of victory at any cost echoed mockingly in my mind. The true price of our wins became chillingly clear. In the days that followed, 
I was consumed by guilt and horror. The mysterious benefactor had delivered on their promise of victory, but the cost was too great, a young life snuffed out in its prime. The connection between our success and Jeremy's untimely death could not be mere coincidence. I realized then that I had made a deal with a force far beyond my understanding, one that demanded a sacrificial price I was not willing to pay. I attempted to contact the sender of the email to revoke our agreement, to plead for mercy. My messages went unanswered, the silence more terrifying than any threat, the realization that I was powerless to protect my team from the consequences of my actions was a burden that weighed heavily on my soul. As the new season approached, the shadow of Jeremy's death hung over us. The boys, once eager and full of life, now played with a hesitance, a fear that mirrored my own. Our victories felt hollow, each game a reminder of the dark pack that had brought us here. The joy of coaching, of teaching, of leading had been replaced by a constant dread of what each win might cost us. It was then that I received another email, its message a sinister echo of the first. The season begins. The price will be paid. The cycle, it seemed, was set to continue. As I looked into the faces of my team, I knew I could not let this go on. I had to find a way to break the chain, to release us from this pact even if it meant facing the consequences of my own greed and ambition. The weight of knowing each victory was shadowed by a potential loss heavier than defeat, pressed down on me as the new season loomed. I was determined to break the cycle, to sever the connection between our success and the unseen forces that demanded such a steep price. The cryptic nature of the emails gave me little to go on, but I knew I had to start somewhere. My search began with digging into every aspect of our victories, looking for patterns or anomalies that could provide a clue. I revisited game footage, scrutinized our plays, and analyzed moments where our triumphs seemed assured by more than mere skill or luck. Yet the answers remained elusive, the source of our unnatural advantage hidden from sight. Driven by desperation, I sought out experts in the occult, individuals well-versed in the unseen and the unexplainable. Their insights painted a grim picture of bargains struck with entities that thrived in the shadows, feeding on ambition, and extracting their toll in cruel ways. The notion that I had unwittingly invited such forces into our lives filled me with dread. One particularly knowledgeable source suggested that the key to breaking the pact lay in confronting the entity directly, to renounce the agreement and accept whatever consequences may come. The thought of facing such a force was terrifying, Yet the alternative, watching another of my players suffer a fate like Jeremy's, was unthinkable. Armed with this scant knowledge, I crafted a response to the sinister email, a declaration of my intent to end the pact. I stated unequivocally that no victory was worth the price we had paid, that I renounced any advantage given, and accepted the consequences of breaking our agreement. The email sent, I awaited a response with a mix of fear and defiance. The reply was swift and chilling, a simple sentence that read, Meet us at the crossroads at midnight. Be alone. The specificity of the instructions, the demand for isolation, it all felt like a scene from a tale of ancient packs and dark dealings. Yet there was a glimmer of hope, the possibility of ending this nightmare. The night of the meeting was fraught with tension. The crossroads, a literal intersection on the outskirts of town, held an eerie silence that amplified my apprehension. As the clock struck midnight, a figure emerged from the shadows, its form barely human, wreathed in an aura of palpable darkness. The entity's voice, a whisper that seemed to echo from everywhere and nowhere, spoke of the pact and the price of breaking it. The air thickened as I declared our intent to be free from the agreement, to accept whatever punishment it deemed fit over the continued cost of human lives. The entity's response was a laugh, cold and devoid of any humanity, a sound that chilled me to my core. Instead of the expected liberation, the laugh signified a deeper entanglement, a dark embrace tightening around my fate. The oppressive air grew denser, not in retreat, but in anticipation, as if my declaration had been the key to unlocking even greater darkness. The meeting ended not with a sense of a bond broken, but with a warning, a prophecy of challenges to come, 
hinting at a bond not just maintained but deepened, a pact sealed with shadows yet to unfold. The chilling encounter at the crossroads marked a turning point not towards liberation, but a deeper descent into the abyss. The entity's laughter, a sound as cold as the void itself, resonated with a part of me I had tried to ignore. It whispered of power, of dominance on the court, of victories no mortal team could achieve. The warning of trials to come was not a deterrent, but a challenge, one I found myself increasingly eager to accept. In the wake of that night, the dynamics within the team shifted palpably. The players, once vibrant and full of life, now moved with a mechanical precision, their eyes reflecting not the joy of the game, but a hollow emptiness. They were no longer just students playing basketball. They had become pawns in a game much larger their wills bending to the dark influence that now coursed through our veins. Our victories resumed, each more commanding than the last, yet they brought no joy. The crowd's cheers sounded distant, their excitement irrelevant. What mattered was the power, the undeniable force that propelled us to crush our opponents with almost supernatural prowess. The price of these victories no longer weighed on my conscience. Instead, it was a necessary sacrifice a tribute to the darkness that had granted us unmatched dominance. The entity's demands grew more audacious, the price it exacted more severe. Yet each demand was met with less resistance, each price paid with less hesitation. The team's success was my success. Their sacrifice is a testament to the lengths I would go to maintain our ascension. The dark pact that had once seemed a curse now felt like a gift, a secret weapon, that assured our supremacy. As the season neared its climax, the true cost of our bargain became ever more evident. The players, once robust and energetic, were now shadows of themselves, their vitality sapped by the dark forces that empowered them on the court. Their sacrifices, once abstract and distant, had become all too real, a tangible reminder of the darkness that enveloped us. The final game arrived, not as a test of skill, but as a ritual, a culmination of our dark journey. The opposing team, unaware of the forces arrayed against them, played with a passion and joy we had long since forsaken. Our victory was inevitable, the game a mere formality. As the final seconds ticked away, sealing our triumph, a sense of emptiness filled the air. There was no joy in this victory, no sense of achievement. There was only the darkness and the unquenchable thirst for more. 